Hey guys, welcome to Independent Land Rover Specialists. This is one of, one of the videos in our, our series of tech videos that we're doing. Um, basically focused on maintenance um, and repairs that you all can do at home. Um, we're going to do links to all of the tools, parts, etc. you need. Today we are featuring a rebuild of a Salisbury differential. Um, these are the heavy duty differentials as seen in most of the older 109s. Um, and 110s, early 110s. Uh, they separate to the different from the uh, regular Land Rover differential, which is a removable pumpkin that has the differential inside of it. Fantastic differential, heavy duty. It's very rare that they give any issues, but occasionally bearings wear out. Um, you may want to upgrade the, the diff ratios, um, different, different gearing, maybe put a locker in it. Um, this can all be done at home, take some time and patience and some tools, but it can all be done. So um, let's get to it. All right, so step number one, raise the vehicle. I mean, if you're doing it at home, put on jack stands, have it safe, shake it, make sure it's not going to fall on you. Um, so first step is you've got to remove the side shafts. So we will undo all the bolts, which I've already done, and then carefully remove the side shaft. Um, you want to kind of give it some support. There is a seal that runs on this face. Um, you want to give it some support not to damage the seal. Um, particularly important when you go back in with it that you don't hit the seal. So take this out. Um, at this time you can inspect the splines, make sure they're in all in good shape. Um, this one's real nice, so we'll put that aside. And then we'll do the same for the other side. All right guys, so next step, um, make sure you drain the oil, otherwise you're going to make a big mess once you pull this cover off. So drain the oil, um, and then I've already taken the bolts out, but then you'll be pulling this cover off. Just like so. So here we have it. Um, the Salisbury differential. These things are beefy, um, really hard to destroy them. Um, Cross bolted, this has four pins, as opposed to most of the other differentials with a two pin. Um, super heavy duty, beefy crown well and pinion um, bearings. So, um, once again, we're doing this if any of the bearings are worn or noisy, if you're putting a locker in it, um, or changing the gearing in it. Now, remember, if you're changing gearing, stating the obvious, your front and rear differentials need to have the same gearing. Um, so if you're doing the gearing in this, obviously you're doing the gearing in the front. Um, so we'll be um, loosening these guys off, removing the pinion. So another very handy tool to have here before you get started is an axle spreader. And this will help spread out the axle. The differential is super tight in here. If you don't have a spreader, you have to use two pry bars, which can be done. Um, you just risk damaging bearings. So let's go at it. All right, so as I mentioned, axle spreader, um, one of the most handy tools to have when doing this job. So this one is by ARB. Again, the link will be in the top right-hand corner and down below. Um, so what this is, just some plates and some, uh, some big bolts to spread it out and some handy instructions. So we have our axle spreader installed. Um, and basically you're going to turn these big nuts to spread it apart. Very important on these, if you spread it too much, you're going to dam damage the casing and then the casing has to be replaced. So um, when you spread it, there's a limit of um, 30 millimeters of spread um, and can't go more than that. So just spread it enough and keep checking the differential. Once the differential moves freely, stop spreading it. So we're going to remove the Remove the bearing caps. Another thing to note over here, um, these bearing caps are numbered, so they need to go back in the same order you took them off. So be sure, if you're not sure about it, take a photograph of the back, um, so you know which numbers go back in which place. All 
right, so I've started spreading the axle. Um, little hint, I try and leave one bearing cap on. Um, you don't want to start spreading this and then the differential falls out onto the floor. So keep one on, I've got it finger tight. Um, keep spreading the axle until you feel movement, which we have already. So we've taken the carrier out. Um, what I like to do is just, once it's out, just release the spreader um, so it's not constantly open. Um, so now we have access to the uh, pinion, so we're gonna remove that. Right, so I'm just undoing the pinion nut at the back. Um, so what you wanna do is just put a hand inside so it doesn't fall out. Or have someone help support, support it. So under the pinion nuts, take off the dry flange. Sometimes this takes a bit of persuasion just with a rubber mallet um, to knock it out of the outside pinion bearing. So just get the bearing out and then pinion shaft. All right, so we have the carrier out. Um, now if this is in great shape, you probably don't need to separate the carrier. If you're just replacing um, your crown wheel and pinion for gearing, um, you can just remove the crown wheel, inspect the surfaces and replace it. Um, as well, if, if all your bearings are still in great shape, they weren't noisy, you're just doing it for a gear change, there's no need to mess with shimming on adjustments so you can redo all the bearings. It's probably good practice just to remove the cups, have a look at the bearings, make sure there's no burn marks or pit marks in them. Um, obviously, if you have it all apart, now's the time to replace the bearings if they need it. Um, so to start with, we'll turn this over, remove the uh, crown wheel. crown wheel off. Next step is we're going to pull the, the uh, carrier bearings off. Um, underneath these bearings are shims on both sides. Once again, if you're not replacing the bearings, if the bearings are in good shape, um, leave those alone because it takes a lot to get those set up. So to pull the bearings off, a little two-legged puller. Um, I have a couple of washers that we'll be putting down in the center. Um, there are two locating sections underneath the bearing, so we'll be putting those in there. Now, don't worry about this if the um, puller damages some, damages some of the shims. Um, we will need to replace the shims anyway. Uh, so a little handy hint here, to get this off, heat works great. So a little bit of heat around the bearing will help expand that bearing and getting it away from the shaft. It's a nice and even heat distribution around. one's coming off nice and easily. Sometimes they'll fight you. If it won't come off and you're getting rid of the bearings, you can always cut the race over here. Um, 
and pull it off from the center. Another little trick, if it still won't come off, is to apply a bead of welding around the race once this is off. Um, the welding and just help expand that and get it off. So, bearing is hot. All right, and then just make sure you retain the shims. All right, so next up, we're gonna separate the carrier. Um, things to note over here, there are marks on the carrier, alignment marks. Pay attention to those. When you put this back together, you want those to line up. split the carrier so I've got all the bolts out it's gonna take a little bit of persuasion just to separate the two there it's off all right so we just want to inspect everything inside here So we're just inspecting the planetary set, make sure there's no pitting or excessive wear on any of these. Teeth all look in great shape. Everything here looks great, so we're just gonna make sure it's nice and clean. And then I have a little gear oil and a squirt bottle, so we'll just lubricate everything nicely. Alright, so once again, alignment marks, most important thing, just make sure those are matching. There it is. Um, so now we'll put the bolts back in, make sure the threads are nice and clean. Um, these get Loctite on them, um, just blue Loctite and then torque down. So we're just going to hit these down with an uh, electric or you can do it by hand. Um, what you want to do is just go across evenly, bi-directionally, um, just to distribute the load and get this down smoothly. So we're going to need to torque down the carrier. Um, carrier bolts are going to go evenly across. Uh, so handy torque wrench. It's going to be 65 to 75 pounds, foot pounds is the spec. So I definitely get an assistant. I have Devlin here to help. All right, so um, easiest here is just get a nice straight bar. I've got a long wrench um, with a bolt through one of these holes. Um, your assistant can hold that, hold the carrier, and then we're going to go after it. Got it? <laughs> So you just wait for a click, and we've got to turn it around. Then. And it's handy also to have a paint pen, um, and then you can just mark once you've torqued down each bolt.
All right, so got the carrier all assembled. Um, notice the paint marks on here. All torqued down. Um, to check this all, make sure it's all nice and level. You can put your fingers in here, just turn it around. You'll see the planetary gears moving freely on the inside. Um, so now we want to mount the um, the crown wheel. Important here, make sure the surface is nice and clean. You don't want any high spots or dirt um, to throw it off. So I've already checked all of this, it's all good. And then once again, bolts, we're just gonna make sure they're clean, apply some Loctite to them. Just like the carrier, crisscross, get it down nice and evenly. All right, so that's done. Um, torque spec here, 110 foot pounds, so a lot of torque on this one. Definitely gonna need an assistant here as well. And then we're gonna torque it down once again crisscross and then paint each bolt so we know we've talked it down. So set this to 100. So we've talked down the crown wheel, um, crisscross, nice and even, um, painted all the bolts so we know it's all talked down correctly. Um, next step is we're going to fit some bearings. Um, we have to now put this assembly inside the case and we have to measure the bearing, the number of shims on each side. Um, helpful hint here is when you order your bearings um, and there'll be a link for all the bearings, we like to use the genuine Timken bearings. Um, and there's a link once again in the top right hand corner and below of the bearing numbers. Um, order two sets and have a set machine down. Um, how that helps, they just set up bearings. So it costs a little bit more money, but if you do not do that, you have to press on and press off the bearings every time. Um, the bearings here on the carrier are press fit onto here, so they're designed to be pressed in, and you'll do that on the final step. But for ease of installing this, so you don't have to use a puller and pull it off and damage the bearing, if you have the machine down, they will fall nicely onto the differential um, and that way you can easily remove them. All right, so we've installed our setup bearings um, and now we're going to put the carrier into the casing and I'll show you how to set up so you can measure for your shims. Okay. Generally this should fit right in without needing to spread this. Um, you don't have any shims here so you don't really need to spread this open. Um, be careful here to hold it in place. You don't want to put it in and then it falls out. So have your bearing caps handy. And pay attention obviously where they came out from. And this is really just for setup. We're not going to tighten these down too tight. Um, it's just to stop it from falling out. Um, and also just to hold it firm that you can get good measurements because we're going to move this carrier left and right. All right, so we'll just nip this down nice and gently. Once again, it doesn't have to be too tight. We need some good movement there, nice and free. All right, another key piece of equipment here um, dial indicator with a magnetic base. These are available most places. Once again, we'll have the link for all these tools, um, but you can also buy these on Amazon. 
Harbor Freight has a decent um, cheap version. Um, so a magnetic base, we're going to mount it on here. First check the runout of the crown wheel um, and then we'll check for the distance um, of the number of shims we need. First check we're going to do with our dial indicator. You can see I've got it set up on your magnetic base um, with a needle right now just touching on the back of the crown wheel. First thing to check is the run out on the crown wheel. Um, if there's any dirt, anything set up wrong, this is not going to run true. So our spec is two thousandths. So each one of these little markings on here, if you look at the key, is one thousandth of an inch. So we put all the put the force towards the back just to bring up the slack, and then we're going to rotate it, and then just watch the needle. We can set that to zero. And you'll see it'll move like that. So set it to zero. We're just going to move it, and then make sure that's within spec. If it jumps around just because you've gone over a little burr, that's fine. But I would do that a couple of times. And then once this is finally all set in, we'll do it again and just make sure it's all set. All right, so then now the next thing we need to check for is we're going to take a measurement. We're going to move this all the way to the left, set this to zero, move the whole assembly to the right, see how much it moves, um, and that will tell us how many shims to put in to set the, the load on the bearings. All right, so we're going to push it all the way to the left, set it to zero again. and then pull it all the way to the right. If you want, you get a pry bar. I have the dial indicator zeroed on the back of the assembly. You can either do it on the crown wheel or on the back of the carrier, anywhere where it's flat. Force push it all the way, set this to zero, and now we're gonna pull it over without upsetting the dial indicator and keep track of how far it comes around. So right now I've gone one revolution around. You can also see that on the smaller gauge of the well. So one revolution around is 0.1 of an inch. So all the way across here, and we've gone one revolution plus five one thousandths. So we'll make a note of that. We have the carrier out of the casing again, um, and we've measured the distance that this traveled left and right, um, which was 0.1 of an inch. Um, so, in the rebuild kit, you will get a set of shims, or if you're buying these individually, we have the part numbers in the link, um, and they come in 10 one thousandths of an inch. So these are 10, sorry, no, 5, 15, and 20. All right, so we're going to measure each one of these shims. We have a 20, a 15. And a 10. Alright, so we have a set of each of those. So we have 0.1 of an inch, so we're going to make that up in shims and they're going to be evenly left and right. Um, we're also going to add the preload according to the specs is 5 one hundredths of an inch, so we're going to add that. So to make this up, we need 55 about on each side. So we'll do a 20. And we'll do three tens on each side. So that'll give us 50 on each side. All right. And we'll set those two sets of shims, two packs, aside and we'll come back to those later. All right, so we've removed the old pinion assembly from the truck, from the carrier. Um, we'll take note on the back over here. There's the number associated to the crown wheel. What I didn't mention before, it's very important to make sure the crown wheel and the pinion are both exactly the same. Um, the number on the side, on the, on the top of the pinion here, needs to match the crown wheel. If you're switching out sets, always make sure these are exactly the same. Um, there's another number stamped into here. It'll either be a plus or a minus. 
Um, this is a plus three, and the pinion we're replacing this with is a plus two. Basically, that is just the nominal above or below nominal setting for these, and it'll tell you how many shims to add or take away on your new assembly. So, once again, when we took the pinion out behind the pinion bearing were the shims, which sets the pinion depth. We're going to start with these same number of shims, but new ones with the same measurement. Um, so what we had on these shims was 30. So as this is super close, we got a plus three and a plus two. The difference there is plus one. That means we need to remove one one thousandth um, of a shim. So we're pretty much exactly the same. So I'm just going to use the same number of shims, new shims, same measurement behind the new bearing. Once we get this all installed, we'll check the gear patterns and the backlash. Um, and with the same number of shims, we should be almost exactly the same. So we've left this bearing race in the freezer for a couple of hours. Um, applied a little bit of heat to the surface over there. We have our shims. These are what we've measured from the old pinion as the, the base point. Um, these go behind the, the race. I'm going to install these. Now because we left that in the freezer, it almost fits in by hand. So we're going to just a gentle tap. We can all either use a bearing installer there, or we can use the old bearing race. So we've installed both races in. Um, another thing we've got and pre-installed is the, is the bearing on the back of the pinion. Um, once again, as we did with the race, I left this in the refrigerator, sorry, in the freezer. Um, to make it shrink, apply a little bit of heat to the inside of the bearing and it basically drops down onto the assembly. Otherwise, this would be a press fit that you've got to press on. Um, so it basically fell down on there. Once everything came to the same temperature, it's now a press fit. So we're going to install this into the carrier. Make sure to hold the one side when you tighten the other side down. And you also want to put these on. The bearings need to be dry. We don't want oil or grease that's going to change our measurements. So we're putting the bearing pinion with the bearing on the front side, put the back side bearing in. Once again, there's no grease, no oil on this. We want it dry for correct measurements. So hold that in place, put the flange on the back. No seal in there right now because we're just going to take measurements. So flange on the back, put the nut back on. Now we're just going to tighten this assembly down just to take up the free play in it. Just a little more. You don't want to do this too much that it goes too tight and damages the bearings. So that's good. We want to tighten it down and use a torque wrench here. So eight to 12 foot pounds. All right, so I have this set up and that's good. You can turn it a few times. It says turn it four times just to seat all the bearings. And then the force to torque eight to 12 foot pounds. So we're good there. We're gonna install the carrier back into the casing. Um, once again, I don't have any shims on here. The pinion is in, so we're gonna install this and then measure the amount that it goes into the teeth of the pinion.
dial into the curve again on the back and then once again push it back and forth and measure again. All right, I've set it to zero. Move it all the way to the left. Recenter it. And then we're going to push it all the way to the right. And we're going to take that measurement. So it went all the way around almost to 0.1. So once again, we're back at zero. Push it all the way around. Once you go. So we have 90 thousandths. All right, so we're going to take note of that measurement. All right, so we have this installed. We've got the dial gauge in. Um, we're going to move this all the way to the left. Basically, what we're doing here is we're going to check the amount of shims that are needed on each side of the crown wheel to set the backlash correctly. As you see it right now, it's all the way to the left, and I have a lot of backlash, so that's way too much. So if you hold the pinion in the front so it doesn't move, left and right, there's a lot of backlash there. Too much of that and you'll feel that in the drive line every time you change gears where these gears are hitting and it's going to prematurely wear the gears. If I move it all the way to the right, I've got zero backlash, so way too tight. So we're going to try and find the happy medium. Um, so if we measure here, we're going to take this all the way to the left, set that at zero, pull it all the way to the right, take a measurement, and I've got right on right on 90 looks like. Do that a few times. Yeah. So I'm right on 90 thousandths. Now the spec is you need to take away 10 one thousandths of that and that'll set your backlash correctly. So if we're at 90 it's going to be 80 and that'll tell us how many shims to put on each side. So we had the shims pre-measured, equal a number of shims on each side. Now with knowing this measurement, we know how many shims to put on the crown wheel side and the tail side to set the backlash. All right, so now we're gonna set up the shims and the final carrier bearings um, onto the carrier. So as you recall before, we had two sets of shims. We measured um, 100 thousandths um, that we needed for the for the bearing preload and we had 50 we measured on each side so now a new measurement for the crown wheel side was 90 um, for the correct backlash we needed to take away 10 thousandths so on the crown wheel side we're going to have 80 and this side we're going to have 20. so on the original shim pack we need to move 30 across to the crown wheel side so we have a 20 and a 10. So we're going to install that on the crown wheel side. Now I've taken off the setup bearings and we're going to install the final bearings. What I'd like to do here as well is just apply a bit of heat. You can also leave this whole carrier in the freezer um, to cool down and it just helps install these a little easier. And we should be able to drop that bearing down. A few little taps and that should go down nicely. So obviously use a sharp press for this if you have one um, as most of you don't at home uh, doing it this way heating it up cooling down the other sections makes it a lot easier so we have that set up on the crown wheel side we'll flip this over I like to put a, a race on here just to protect the bearing and 
And so now the remaining shims, which should be 20, which it is, we're gonna put on the other side. Heat up the bearing again and we'll install it. once it's seated by the thud. All right, so this is all set up now. So we're going to put this aside. We're going to finish putting our pinion in, put the crush sleeve in the pinion, get that all set up right, and then we'll install the carrier once and for all. So we can install the assembled carrier into this. Now that we have the shims on each side, it's pushed out the bearings. Um, so we're going to have to spread this. So. Once again, just a few more few turns. We'll attempt to fit the carrier. If it doesn't work, then we'll open it up a little bit. But just a little mounts at a time. All right. All right, so we've installed the carrier. Um, we divided the shims, both sides. And um, now we're gonna torque these down. We're gonna check for backlash and then check our wear pattern. So right away I can feel I've got a good, decent backlash here. Feels like it's within spec. So let's start, we'll talk these down. Um, 95 to 105 foot pounds. All right, that's good. We're gonna check for, um, check for our backlash. Everything's torqued down, I've got the spreader loose so no force on that so we need to set up our dial indicator so right on the right on the tooth um, so set that to zero And spec is six to eleven thousandths. Um, so six to eleven thousandths. Right. So seven one hundred thousandths. So that's right within spec. This is six to eleven. So we're good there. So the almost the final check here was we want to check our gear pattern. So how much the pinion is meshing in with the ring gear. Um, we don't want it too shallow. If it's too shallow, it means our pinion needs to move in closer. So we'll have to increase the number of shims. Um, if, it, if it's too deep, we have to remove the amount of shims. Um, so we'll use some um, gear meshing paint, um, marking paint, just to, to check. And we're gonna paint that within the teeth, just a good amount. So this paint is available online. Most places it is pretty costly. Um, we'll have a link in the top right hand corner. This is actually a homemade concoction, which works just as well using lithium grease, a little turmeric, a little crazy, but we'll have a link to that recipe as well. Um, so we'll paint a good amount on, and then we'll rotate it. All right, so we'll get an assistant. So hi, Edwin. Hello. <laughs> Um, and you just want to get a block of wood or something, put a bit of pressure okay. on the crown wheel. Um, we're going to turn it, have the teeth mesh. We're going to go forward and backward. That way we're going to get the wear pattern on both the um, drive side and the coasting side of the gear. So we can see wear patterns on both sides. So you put a bit of pressure on there. I'm going to turn the pinion back here. So we're going to just come around so, so that it meshes with the pinion. So just do it a few times, forward and back, and all right, we should be good there. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. So we've got we've got good 
dip across the tooth over here. Um, we'll put a little link in the top right hand about how it should and shouldn't look. Um, so if it was too high up or too low down, you have to adjust the shims and then adjust the shims on the on the carry as well. But we've got good even depth across all the teeth on both the drive side and the coast side. So we're all set there. So final thing, um, we'll wipe this off. Luckily, this is all lithium grease. So um, I try and st steer clear of any water-based paint or anything that obviously could affect, you don't want water in the differential. So, so we'll clean this off, button this up. Um, we've got to put the adjustable crush sleeve on the back, set the pinion, and then we'll be done. All right, so coming back to the front end of this, we're going, coming back to the front end, we're going to take the pinion bearing out and then we have to put the crush sleeve in. So stop by taking this out. So once again, this was all dry. So we can put a bit of oil on this now and go back. So now we've got to slide the crush sleeve in. Some of the other Dana axles, which are exactly the same, use shims, um, which is a bit of a pain. It's actually easier. Um, so he has an old crush sleeve, new crush sleeve. You can see the height. This one's already been crushed. Um, we're going to slide this on, and then there's a specific way to tighten this down. If you've got too much, it happens pretty quick. You've got to replace the crush sleeve. So um, anyway, so we'll slide that on. Let's get a bit of oil. Not super necessary because as soon as we lube this, it's going to get oil on the bearing anyway. We'll turn it over by hand before we put any load on it but so all important um, oil slinger fits in over there um, and now we haven't done this yet but now we can install our seal on the back Okay, so just install the seal. So I think that should be in. I'm just going to check it to make sure. You don't want it rubbing on the flange. Go a little deeper with it. Alright, that's all we're getting. So that's all the way down. Alright, I'm just the seal does have a little bit of grease on it, but you want to make sure they don't go and dry. Put a little bit of clean grease on the lube on the flange. So we've got a new genuine flange. new nut and then like before I'm going to tighten this down just to take up the free play all right so we're going to we have this the free play taken up on this now the idea now is to crush that sleeve um, so that sleeve We'll cr start crushing at 250 foot-pounds. Um, obviously, that's a lot of force. Um, we're going to tighten it with the air very slowly until we get to that. If you go over 250, it collapses that spacer pretty quick, um, and then you have to put in a new spacer. So um, we're going to tighten it down with the air gun. Spec on this, um, so torque, torque to turn. Um, the force to turn is 15 to 30 foot-pounds if you're using old bearings in here if you're using new bearings it's 30 to 40 foot-pounds so I have a torque wrench here set to we have new bearings so I'm at about 34 35 foot-pounds um, so I have some good resistance but it's obviously still too light so I'm going to tighten down the nut just a little bit at a time until we hopefully reach that 30 to 40. 
just little movements and keep checking. I'm actually going to go back to 30. So just that I'm going to start of the... Alright, so looks like we're now just turning it and it's at 30. And we're good there. So what I'll do, I'll assemble everything, um, get fluids in this and go drive it and then we'll take the drive shaft off again and just retalk it just once all the bearings have settled in. Put the axles back in. Once again, per, when I disassemble this, we've got a seal race here. There's a seal on the inside. We've got to make sure we support this so it doesn't damage the seal. Especially when these splines go through. So kind of support it. You'll feel the seal and then you can push it all the way and give a little bit of pressure so it engages into the differential. this tech session on how to rebuild your Salisbury differential on your Defender. If there's any other videos that you'd like to see that may be helpful, please leave comments down below and we'll get those added. Otherwise, just like us, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, and remember it's only done when it's done right.